Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Huckabee, and welcome to Conversations with Nicole. My guest today is Etc. You're going to love him. He is hailed as the epitome of modern day music royalty. He's made waves with his album Character and his next album Sagittarius, and that album features singles and collaborations with notable names like Kaya Jones from the Pussycat Dolls and Trisha Covington. His single is that Mike on is propelling his popularity. You're really going to love him. You're going to want to follow his music. I hope you enjoy today's conversation. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. I am delighted to have as my guest today, etc., all the way from the big city of New York. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me, Nicole. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, it's quite the honor to have you. You have quite the career. I want you to, first of all, just start off telling people a little bit about yourself and, and you know, where you grew up and how you've gotten to where you are today. Um, well, as everyone knows, my name is et cetera. Um, I do hip hop music. Um, I really do music and I love it to death. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, you know, Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Um, I got this way through a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, um, a lot of, you know, aspirations. Um, I came through like, you know, like everybody else, I was a, you know, uh, introvert kid from Brooklyn. I was always on punishment because I didn't know how to keep, you know, I had a smart mouth. And um, <laughs> my mother was like, guess what you're not going today? And I said, we're outside. So I, yeah. I was right, right, right. I watched TV and created these characters and all this stuff. But um, I started off as a ghostwriter. And then I was like, you know, I'm never going to be able to make records. I'm not good enough. And then um. Long story short, I met some gentlemen from, um, or some guys I used to hang out with, like my boys. They were from Park Place in Nostrand, and, and they introduced me to this world called hip hop and how it really goes down. And I started doing demo tapes, and demo tapes turned into records, records turned into a career, and I'm here right in front of you um, as the person I am, you know. A multi award what an amazing career you have. And I'd like to know, how did you actually develop your love for music and specifically hip hop? Um, and you're very broad in, in what you like to write and what you like to perform. So tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I grew up, um, actually, my, one of my favorite artists is Glenn Campbell. Um, God rest his soul. What? I live the country western music a lot. And country western is known for its stories. And um, mm -hmm. country western and R and B is not that far apart from each other. It's just from where part of the world it come from. So I started writing these like these fables of who I was, and then all of a sudden, you know, it it transcribed into where I'm at today. But I listened to Glenn Campbell. Oh, okay. First song I ever heard was Rhinestone Cowboy. Um, next song that really had me. Um, captivated was um, Say 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 by Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. Yeah. Um, then I used to listen to the rock band Kiss and after that, you know, I was introduced to like LL Cool J Bad and I was like, what's this? But that had that rock flavor in it and then they introduced me to like artists like um, you know, Houdini and they started playing this hip hop and what I said is um, if I fused this with my fables with this music how would it sound? And it became magic after that. Well, you clearly have magic when you're singing and when you're on stage. The audience is drawn to you. They love to watch you perform. Well, my first album was a, um, a, re a release on TSOB Records under um, the Federal Universal Music Group. That was my actual first studio album. I had a, a lot of records before that, like independent records. Um, I actually had a record called Bees Like That when I first released my own public record. And it actually was like, it charted like highly in um, college radio. Um, and it was promoted by um, a gentleman I know, Rick Betterman. He used to be the um, radio director for um, Atlantic Records. And 
to this day, you know, it's still played overseas. The B-side was featuring a um, called Tonight, it, featuring UG from the Cellar Dwellers, which is like one of hip hop's royalty. And so is like Gage, same hip hop royalty. And they, you know, they blessed me to even be on my record. I mean, I was just amazed. And that was started my first like big shows that I was so shy. But once I touched the stage, I don't know, it all just went away. Um, first album was under that TSOB label under Federal. Uh, my second album was Character. Character was a, one of the most highest selling records albums I had. Character was the most, um, was a diverse album, was my first introduction to being like et cetera and who et cetera was and how did I evolve in this industry. I mean, songs from like um, City of Churches, um, you know, um, So Long, you know, Sin City. And those records sort of like projected me into a whole nother world that I didn't really understand, like pop culture, um, you know, alternative music. Um, I did songs that had R&B flavor that I always wanted to do. And that's when I really found out being me was OK. Um, and so far, the charts and the record sales said that, too, it was OK to be me. Yes. Well, you is great. And I think that's something that in this world, when you are truly authentic to who you are and you don't, you know, bend to what other mm -hmm. people want you to be just to make a sale, you really don't want to sell yourself out because if you're true to yourself, your audience, your listeners, your followers, your fans, they'll be there for you. And they, they're showing up for you. Between the sales and the charts, uh, I did I did high 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 impressive numbers. Um, yeah. You know, I mean the album was character. I think I licensed the album cover at least twelve times because it told me who I was. Because you know, in this world, everybody plays a character. Don't think you don't. Um, you know, once you I get agree. Up, yeah, you play a character because you walk yes. out in the street, you're somebody. You have to be somebody in order to you know continue the day. You you know some people you have to act like you like you don't like some <laughs> sometimes That's you gotta very be true. <laughs> we just no. said it out loud etc. That's yeah, very true. I, I tell you so. That's what I played in that album character. I played a different character on each and every record, each and every um, walk through my career at that particular time. I played that character. So I played you know. Uh, I played a hip hop artist. I played a R and B artist. I played a um, country western artist. I played, you know, a lover, a fighter. You know, it, it, that whole that whole album was a movie, and I played each and every character very well. I should have got an Oscar, but you know, that was <laughs> a category. I'll call them up for you. And I the variety that you have within your music. I mean, that's beautiful to be able to give people more than just one thing, you know, it's, mm. it's oftentimes the unexpected is what I hear from you. Mm. Well, that's what the et cetera comes from. Um, yeah. I, you know, I went through a plethora of names, um, you know, and then et cetera, you know, we, me and my, uh, my, my DJ at the time, the name was self, we was like, we call ourselves et cetera. But then, you know, everybody started calling me, et cetera. And he had his own name at the time, which is self one. Um, Okay. And then, you know, when he, you know, he decided to go a different route in the industry, I just became, et cetera, all alone. I mean, it was like, it wasn't a, like a huge transition, but um, it's one of those things, et cetera, means and so forth and on. And, yes. you know, it continues. So I figured, you know, live up to the name, be yourself. But I had the name since like 99, we was doing that. So, but um, I see a lot of et cetera, but it's only one multi-award winning recording artists etc and only you know, one og and that's you that's right and they don't understand that but it's cool i mean they see my my footprints all over the globe so they'll they'll figure it out sooner or later <laughs> hey let them worry about them you do you yeah. and what what's working for you since you, you've chad your name in the 90s till now is is it's happening <laughs> Uh, you're making waves you are really being seen by so many talk about this 
album Sagittarius. I want to know okay. about the songs on it. And of course, we have Is That Mike on? That's that's your song right now that's really, yeah. really on the charts, right? Yes. Yes. So Is That Mike on was actually recorded um for a TV show called um BMF was Black Mafia Family, which is under uh, 50 Cent's um mantra under the Stars Network. Um it's on episode two, season two. Um, and when it first when it first hit, I didn't even know it was there until he told me. And um there was like an overwhelming response over it, um, down to who's this guy? Oh, that can't be, etc. He doesn't do he does pop music. And I said, you know, I still could rap. Like I really rap very well. I was like the yeah. top rapper for like eight years, like underground and like what are we talking about here? But however, you know, that's not, I'm not one dimensional, but I, I wanted people to understand that I still know how to do hip hop music and still, you know, spit those bars and, you know, lack of a better word, but, you know, yeah. and also it's 50 years of hip hop. Why wouldn't I? Um, they, um, you know, when it first aired, I was like, okay, nobody's going to listen, but it just, it just took like a, a, a snowball effect. And it sort of sparked me and sparked the label and sparked everyone to say, where's the album? I, be, I was working on an album regardless, but that was like the jump start to the album. And I battled with a couple of names for the album. And I was like, you know what? I'm going right back to who I am. I'm Sagittarius. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Sagittarius. And that's where okay. all that came from. Is that Mike on is like hip hop at it, at, 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 I guess epitome and i believe that and it, it was produced by um my man who produced character album he produced 95 percent of that movie i mean excuse me 95 percent of that um album his name is um um fran sean corbett we call him fran Ann. and um <laughs> he did an amazing job on both projects i mean he's he's part produced on this album sagittarius he did amazing work um and i'm very proud of the album sagittarius just like i'm proud of is that mic on and and i'm going to show the world how proud i really am of the project absolutely absolutely well i listened to it and i i, I loved it i thought it was great and um, wow. i watched a video of you performing in, in new york and people people were all about it i think that's the um that's the the job of an artist is to be an artist um you are an entertainer you are an artist you are the person that's supposed to um engage the crowd um, I learned that from watching a lot of like hip hop artists, a lot of R&B artists. And, I, you know, I'm a real big New Edition fan. And, you know, I watch how certain artists like transcend time and how the, the records they have is like like timeless. Also look at how they perform. And I believe that when um, when an audience comes and they pay their money, they work, you know, how many hours a day, how many hours a week? They need to come and see a show that when they go home, they want to say, I was there and it was amazing. And I want to give them an amazing performance each and every time. Or it makes no sense to touch the stage. It doesn't. You, you give That's them what so they true. Do. And I, I love the fact that you actually have an appreciation for those of us who pay for the tickets to go see people because oh, I've done sense. that. And I think, wow, this is a lot. But, you know. I leave the concert saying that was awesome. Yes, it was a hefty price, but I'm glad I went. But you know, really, that's what that's what makes our world work. I mm -hmm. work so I can go see people like you. You're working. You're on the stage is fun. It's the the steps up to it that's like oh, you got to rehearse 24 times a day. Um, you have to remember. You have to remember all the key points and when you have to stop, pause. Then you have to collaborate you know, with your DJ, yeah. with your um, band, with the sound man. And sometimes everyone's not on the same page. So <laughs> you have to like, before that show starts, everyone has yeah. to be on page one. Or at least be yeah. in the glossary. It, it is somewhere. work to do what you do. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, what you're doing takes a lot of hard work and dedication and perseverance and never yeah. giving up because not everybody makes it to that level that you've made it to because yeah. it's hard. And clearly you have said, I'm in it to win it. And I am yes. not stopping because 
you shared with me before we started rolling on on the show you you have two degrees you're educated you could probably bounce back and do something different outside of entertainment but you are committed to making music to entertaining and being something special for the audience that you serve and i think that's awesome i, I let me tell you something i really think this is a um a dynamic feel because it also offers you um other talents that you can use like i believe that you know performing is what everyone does tell you true like i said you're a character every day but you have to still perform every day like yeah. you know you are an anchor when that when they go go you have to put that that million dollar smile on you know put that hair and set and sit up straight and bow right and when it's over you could go <sighs> Right. Yeah. So I believe that that's what you give no matter what you do. Like, like you said, I, I like, I right. have two degrees. Like I have a bachelor's and a master's degree. So what I did is I, I used that same talent and I applied it to school because um, even though this is great, it's music, it's still a business. And yes. you still have to have a mindset of a business person because um, I think Jay-Z said it. And I didn't realize it till like a couple of years later when he said the phrase, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. You are, you're a business, you're a product. You are the business. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I diversified the business. I, you know, I have other ventures, but music is what brought me in. Music saved my life. Hip hop saved my life. Hip hop put me in a direction that I don't think any other business will put me in. Um, but it also sparked a lot in me. It sparked my sensitivity, it sparked my creativity, and it sparked me as a, it, it, it made a man out of me. And you know, yeah. every boy grow up doesn't become a man, you know, so it made a man out of me. It showed me, you know, that you have responsibilities, you have people that count on you every day. Um, even though I had to do it at a young age, um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to be, you know, it helped me take care of my family. It helped me take care of other people's families. So, you know, I, I really treasure what I do and I treasure the people that, 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 that support me. And, you know, if, you know, I try to do as much as I can to make their lives just as happy as they made mine. I love that. And you have passion for your yeah. music. If therefore it becomes your purpose. And when purpose and passion are mixed together, you, you find success. And that is because you're doing what you really love. And that's so important. I think so many people end up in places in their life and they're not fulfilled because they're not really fulfilling their purpose. They're not using what they're passionate about to make a difference in the world. It's people, you have to appreciate people. Um, and that's why when I looked at this album and I put it together, um, I put together like a whole like span of ideas, a whole span of music, a whole span. And it's going to be a little bit, a lot for people to digest, but I didn't give you one dimension. Um, I mean, even down to the, to my album cover, you can see I mean, it's in the background. I, I really love it though. It's like, I give me, I've given you like a dynamics of the world in just one swoop and it's you know you can't miss it um i put it on everything now and i think it's um it's like the staple of you know who i am i mean i didn't want to have like a regular picture of me going e -e. So yeah. i gave like this my whole silhouette and there's so many other things that i'm i want to do but um and you know as we get deeper i'll tell you other things i am doing but you know <laughs> you're gonna be like how do you have time listen it's time for everything well, do you want to share about the collaborations that you have on sagittarius and some Ooh. of the people that you've worked with oh so oh so this is the fun part like i like this part okay so, good oh, what, what? My, my, i thought we were already having fun no, this whole I, thing has been because oh, there's no such word as funner you know i, I don't know there's not <laughs> No, but I'll tell you, this is the funner. The f okay, so let me do hip hop. This is the funner part. Um, the funner part, yeah. <laughs> the funner. Um, no, the collaborations were amazing. Like to collab with other artists in that same mindset was like, you know, it was like, 
why do you want to? I said, because these are the people I've encountered in my life. Um, one of the people I encountered was um, Trisha Covington. She's a 90s artist and she has like such a soulful voice. And she's like, she does she songs with like, you know, some of the best of them out there. Um, and, you know, being that she was like a chart chopper, I said, I wanted to bring like that 90s hip hop be since is that mic on sounds like a not early 90s record and i never got a chance to make records in the 90s like that um you know i started like ni- into 2000 i say 99 because i want to just say you know, i'm in the 90s they'd be like no you were 2001 i like but i did record it it was like mm, nah but um but i think about it in the 90s so yeah, it should thought about it <laughs> i hope you did, i hope you didn't copyright that because i'm gonna use that um, i didn't you can have it it's all yours I, I started and i started rocking in the 90s like ghostwriting in the 90s um so she was like an amazing talent her um a uh, 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 former husband had um i was talking to him i was like i need some music this 90s he's like I said, this this beat was made by this gentleman named Thane Brown. He called him my friend Thane. He's on to you on the album as well. Um, he's from a group called Dear Tatiana, an amazing alternative um, hip hop group. Um, and he was like, my my wife is Trisha Covington. I was like, stop lying. He was like, yeah, are you talking about Trisha Covington, Trisha Covington? The, oh, yeah. I was like, he was like, yeah. I was like, oh please ask her. And she agreed. And her daughter actually wrote that hook by your side. And she was 18 at the time. And she killed that. And then Trisha actually sang it. And I'm, you know, to this day, um, I'm like, that's like, that's almost like Mary J. Blige and Method Man type record. And it, it got mm-hmm. so much um, love. I performed it for the first time when I was on a um, bill with Wyclef and Scarface at the Grammys. And it came off like incredible. My other one was a, a hip hop artist named Billions. He's like, you know, he's like hip hop underground, hip hop dynasty. Um, you know, he thought he could rap better than me, but mm, that's why you got the hook, you know. But now nah, he, he he really gets busy. Um, I have one there, my friend Thane. I have another gentleman on it named Grapevine. He's from like I have this thing where he's he's on a song with me, um, Churches and Angels. And churches is like, like churches is how many, you know, New York is like the city of churches because we have so many churches in New York. It's like every other block is a church or a liquor store. And, um, and he's from California now. So churches and angels, like, um, the city of angels. So I called it churches and angels. And it was like, the name is like incredible. He, um, he's from a, a hip hop group, a legendary hip hop group. I grew up on listening to They named trends of culture. And I used to listen to the song called Off and On all the time. And I was like, that style is so crazy. He's so nice. And, you know, you know, Six Degrees of Separation, his yeah. DJ had played an, um, an event for me. And he was like, that's my partner. I got him. And he was like, oh, my God, you just took it back. Because I started off doing like these things where I respect hip hop so much that all through my career, I always did a record with an artist in the 90s that I really respect. Like it started off with Kwame, who I came into this game with um, as a kid, he used to wear polka dots. He was like my mentor, my cousin. I loved him. I still love him. I did it with Sonya Blade. Then I went with UG from Cellar Dwellers with the song called City of Churches, which is on um, character. And then I came to Grapevine. So that's like my lineage to always keep myself grounded in hip hop. Um, Then um, my friend Thane, um, Adam Shank, which is a song called Sexiest, which I think is like, they love this song. I don't, I heart and DJ, you know, Charlie Sharp from BPM Beats One, he loves this. And I seem like that's going to be one of the singles off the album. And then right. I did another one with Jay Marvin, David Marvin, the Martian. He's, um, it's called Secret. And then I sort of like ended it up, um, with Kaya Jones from the, um, mega iconic group pussycat dolls and that's mm. called dance for you and then i did dance for you remix so it was like kaya jones pussycat dolls i was like of course what do you think yes. I'm 
I'm like I said, I'm young, black, and eclectic. So you know, yeah, it's I'm explosive. My, this album is explosive. Yes. Yeah. I even took um, Argentina's like sweetheart um, named Serena. She did a Latin record with me called Fuego. Um, I wanted to touch each and every part of the world. Um, and I came in and I said, you know what? That's what a Sagittarius does. Um, yes. And that's what it came about. And as you can see. I from, love that. I, they got my pillow from my album, album listing party. And oh, all that's the awesome. Once did that happen? Yeah. So I loved it. How do I get one of those? I want one of those. Oh, get one to to you. Yeah, they. I, that was one of the things that the album listening, and I really appreciate everyone that came out. I did it during Grammy week. I'm out in LA, and people that came out, I was like, you know, it, it was it was outstanding. Like I had actors, promoters, record director. I mean, radio directors. You know, and I have to I have to give this guy a shout out because. Um, my DJ, his name is DJ Brooklyn Rich. He's the DJ on um, my radio station, I Am Etc. Radio. Um, he does an amazing job. And I'll be honest with you, I couldn't do the radio station without him. He does it. He really does it. My name is just on it. He just really does it. And then I give a shout out to Jay Brutet, um, Jonathan Elderby for coming out. You know, DJ Charlie Sharp, he's the one that gave me the shot at iHeart. You know, these guys have just, just amazing. And I, I shout out the sponsors after, but they were like amazing. Um, IHL, Caribbean Moonshine, they, they was amazing. Like Model Mafia, that, 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 that's probably what sparked this album is going on the charts and in the, in the, in the sales that is breaking right now. I'm just happy to finish. That's awesome. Love it. I'm sorry. I just well, want to you have your hands. You have your hands in a lot with yeah. a radio station. I know you've got some things on the horizon with with oh. business dealings. And I mean, just the world is your oyster with what you have going on and your future. It's going to get brighter, no doubt. I'm I, from your mouth to God's ears to my career. <laughs> I want I'm I'm looking at there's a lot of things coming down the pike and you know. They tell me I don't dominate um, interviews a lot, but, you know, I feel so comfortable talking to you. I mean, I, I, okay. I think we emailed you more than we emailed, you know, any record promoter just to get on this show. Oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> you know, you know, we were like, listen, we need we, we need to I'm be on. And honored. <laughs> yeah. Where is this girl? Let's talk to her. Well, listen, I have. <laughs> yeah. Where is she? Find her. Um. Listen, I'm glad you found me. I think we could probably talk for hours and hours, but we probably need to wrap up. But I, I want to, as we close, some some final thoughts on your on your future, anything that you want to share there, and how people can find you and follow you and hear your amazing music. Um, I do want to say something I know is preliminary. Um, um, there's going to be a rum created named Sagittarius. Um, done by Caribbean Moonshine. It'll be out in um, Total Wines in about 40, 25 to 40 different locations in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, and I really appreciate the Caribbean Moonshine company for even, you know, thinking that much of me and to putting it on there. It's going to be a special edition, excuse me, a limited edition, um, and it's Sagittarius limited edition, and I'm dedicating this to the 50 years of hip hop. Um, you can find me on www.imetc.com. You can Google Sagittarius, um, et cetera. It, it'll pop up. It should be all over the place. And if not, I need to re-talk to my promotion team again. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it will. <laughs> yeah. Um, they can find me on, um, Instagram, which is the real, et cetera. Even though I got hacked and I don't have all the followers that I used to have. However, I have 14 different social medias and I do apologize if I don't have all the numbers I used to have, but I'm, I'm servicing a globe right now. Um, and I look forward to, you You've know, got numbers in other areas that matter more than the socials. You're killing it out there. So don't even worry about it. that. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I don't want to let anybody down or, you know, make it seem like that. But, you know, as long as I'm on conversations with Nicole, I'm fine right now. This is my jump start. <laughs> I'm serious. You don't understand how, how, how this is such a big deal to me. That's why I think I'm talking it right now. It's such a big deal to me. You wow. really don't understand. 
Well, I I actually don't because I don't see myself that way. But that's very kind of you to share that with me and um, for you to take the time out of your very busy schedule to spend some time with me. I'm most appreciative. And I, I'm a little bit starstruck. I'm not going to lie because I was thinking he's a big deal. I've interviewed well, some pretty major people, but I don't know. I'm a little starstruck. So thank you. You are amazing. <laughs> I, I, and I, I second and I second it towards you as well. Well, we, we, I, I will also have to try the ROM when it comes out. I, oh, yeah. full disclosure, I'm more of a um, tequila and vodka girl. So Ooh. put a label on one of those for sure. Well, next, I, after right. your ROM. I, I used to be, I used to be the brand ambassador for Lamborghini Champagne. Um, I started that works off- too. <laughs> I don't discriminate. I'll no, know you're yeah, wrong. Yeah. If, you, if you Google Lamborghini champagne, et cetera, yeah, I did that for like two years. Um, okay. but you know, I didn't, I, you know, I, I, it, you know, it, it got bigger than me. I was like, you know, but I was just happy for Lamborghini to even think of this kid from Brooklyn and for me to make such a splash and now for Caribbean moonshine to even do a signature. And it's, um, it's a rum. It's a peanut butter and chocolate blend. Yeah. So what? I was like, "Oh my god!" And it's like I drinking a Reese's th- cup. Yes. So big <laughs> shout out to Steve and Mike, you know, I for just... putting it together and you know bringing it to the world. And I'm pretty sure, you know, well, let me not say pretty sure. It's gonna be a hit. Moonshine rum. That's wonderful. That's 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 awesome. Did you did you did you know that you said when you talk about all the drinks, how you made a splash? Splash. Did you get your own little thing you did there? Yeah, listen, that's what that's what hip hop artists do. I'm 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 a wordologist. Exactly. That's not even a word. See, either, I'm just I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to you. So. <laughs> Oh, gosh, this has been great. I, I hope everyone will go listen to your music, find yes. all the things that you've collaborated with, the Sagittarius album, amazing. Thank Such you. awesome people that you've collaborated with and that they get to be with you on your album. I mean, that's the real treat at yeah, the end of the I'll day. So, they, they are wonderful people. They're spread all over the globe. And I know when it comes to doing the shows, I'm going to have to go, you know, put everybody in. But... um. You know, just the whole piece is great. It's great. And I thank you for allowing me to be on your show. I thank you for taking the time with me. Um, I just thank you. Well, I thank you. It's been so much fun. Folks, make sure you follow, et cetera, because there's always more to come with you. It goes on and on and on. I got it. Thank you, my friend. And thank that you. will do thank it you. for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.